All right, so we're back with another video. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how we can register events in Discord JS. So what exactly is an event? Well, events are pretty much whenever a certain occurrence happens. So let's say, for example, when you are typing something, that is an event, right? That is the, uh, I, I, I don't remember the exact name of it, but I do know that there's an event for that. I think it's user typing start, something like that. Whenever you send a message, that is known as the message create event. And events pretty much allow us to develop applications, spe specifically asynchronous applications, right? And so, for example, whenever someone is typing a message, you might want to send a response to the user, okay? So how would you do that? Well, you would listen to the message create event, and then you would write some code to respond to the user and do whatever it is that you want. For example, another event that I can give you an example of is the whenever a member joins, that's also an event, right? The member joins and you might want to tag them, send them a welcome message, send them an image, a funny GIF or a funny meme, whatever it is, right? That is also another event that you can handle with Discord. There's plenty of events that go on on the Discord client. And one way that you can actually check what are the possible events is you can actually go over to the Discord JS documentation you can click on base client. Uh, actually, let me find, no, I'm sorry, not base client. You can click on client and you can see all of the events right over here. Now, if you see an event has a red D over here, like a red box with the letter D, that just means that that event is deprecated, which means that you can actually still use it, but you probably should not use it because in the future, it's going to be removed anytime soon. So just make sure that you avoid using these methods or these events, that is, okay? Um, usually they will tell you what is the alternative. Okay, in this case, uh, they link to a GitHub issue, but don't worry about that for now. But these are a lot, these are all of the events that you can handle. And a lot of these events are translated from the official Discord docs. So for example, if you were to go to the documentation, and if you were to click on uh where is it? Gateway. And if you were to look at gateway intents and you would see that each gateway intent, there's guilds, guild members, right? They have a list, an unordered list of all of the events that are handled. And all of these events are, uh, are uh, synonymous to the events that you see on this page over here. So for example, if you look at the channel create event, that is this event right over uh let's see it should be somewhere over here i think it's guild channel create i think i want to find the exact one just so you can see the actual translation where is channel uh channel create right over here okay channel underscore create and this is the name of the event okay so let's say for example if you wanted to uh you want it to handle something or i'm sorry let's say for example you wanted to do something whenever a channel on the server is created right well you would listen to this channel create event so you can perform some kind of asynchronous task events are asynchronous so um they'll happen whenever and then you can handle it and then it will perform the task at an asynchronous time just figured out to mention that okay so the most basic event that we can listen to is the ready event. And that event is fired whenever the bot has successfully uh, connected to the gateway and it's ready to actually start, uh, you know, receiving events from the Discord gateway. So for example, let's go into our code. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, let me go over here. I'll go ahead and write client.on. And basically the on function allows you to register an event, listen to an event. Okay, so the event we'll listen to is the ready event. Now, when it comes to registering an event, you're going to have two parameters. The first parameter is always going to be the name of the event. The second parameter is going to be the uh, the event handler function is what I like to call it. But it's really just a callback function or an anonymous function. Okay, those terms are all synonymous, right? Because it is a callback function. It is an anonymous function, right? And it is also a function that handles the events, okay? So this is going to be a callback function, okay? It's really just an arrow function that is being passed in as a parameter. 
and this function does not take in any parameters at all okay and you can literally do whatever you want so i'll just simply write a console log and what i'll do is i'll just say bot has logged in if you want to be a little bit more descriptive you can actually uh, reference the client's uh, properties so i'll use a template string and i'll reference the client variable because remember this is an instance of the client right and one thing that I will also mention is that you can actually go to the docs. So we can go over to the client class over here and you can see all the properties that you can reference. So for example, if you want to get information about the client itself, like let's say, for example, if you want to get the name of the bot, you can just reference client.user. Okay. And this is an instance of client user. So we'll click on that and that will tell us what the properties are. Okay. And then will happen from here is we can reference the username property which will give us the username of the client user okay which is also known as the username of the bot so for example client user username you can also do user.tag which will give you the username concatenated with the pound symbol and the uh, four the discriminator also known as the four digits of the uh, of the uh, discord's user so i'll just say client.user.tag has logged in and because we're using NodeMon, you're going to see that it's going to auto update and it's going to say just a second, give it some time because uh, it will it will delay a little bit because obviously uh, there's like some write limiting happening and they don't want to allow you to spam the gateway. So you can see that it gives us coffee bot hashtag 8917 has logged in and we can theoretically write whatever we want. Uh, we can do whatever we want inside this event handler function. Okay, you can connect to a database, you can call another API, you can register application commands, whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it inside of here. Okay, so this is just an example of the ready event that you want to handle. Let's handle one more simple event. Let's handle the message event. And this is actually the message create event. Um, and basically this event is going to be fired whenever a user, including the bot, sends a message. And the callback function, also known as the event handler function, is going to take in one parameter. And that parameter is going to be the message object. And that is the message that was created. Okay. And when I say created, I really just mean that the message that was sent. Because it was created and it was sent. Okay. So I'll show you how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write a console log. And I'm going to log the contents of that message okay so to get the actual content whatever the user sent we refer we reference the property content message.content right over here so let's go back to our discord server and let's say hello and you're going to see that it says uh, oops you're going to see that right over here for some reason it's not printing anything i'm not sure why uh let's try again hi i'm not sure why it's not logging anything let me actually check the docs real quick just to make sure we're not missing anything best thing that you can always do is check the docs so right over here i'm clicking on message.content but for some reason is not listing the content i think you know what it is i think maybe we may have not opted into the correct intents um that might be probably what we did not do so let me actually go over here that's kind of annoying uh let's see Let me do this because it's not, we don't need the, the message content intent yet. Let me try this guild. Uh, let me try this real quick. This is really just the same thing as we did before, but let me just do this instead. Because it should have worked. Um, okay. Let's try gateway intent bits message content. Maybe that is what we need. I think we might need to 
opt into that. Okay, did that. Oh, the bot hasn't logged in yet. Give it a little bit. Uh, privilege intent provider is not enabled or whitelisted. Okay, let me go into our application and let me go ahead and enable the intent, the message content intent. Uh, right over here. Save. All right. All right. Let's restart our bot. Okay. So let's try sending the messages now. Okay. There we go. So it seems like we actually needed to opt in to the actual intent itself. If I remove this and if I try to, uh, again, you can see that nothing be, nothing is locked. Okay. So we actually do need to, uh, enable message content and we also need to opt into the intent. That's good to know. Okay, but you can see what's going on is whenever I type a message, hello, it's going to be logged in the console, right? Because what's happening is I'm creating the message and on the Discord gateway, right? Whenever you type a message and when you send it, the Discord gateway is going to fire a message create event, right? And the bot is going to listen to that message create event and we can go ahead and get the message that was just created or sent right and we can get the content of that by referencing message.content you can also do other things too such as uh getting the date that it was created on created at for example to date string right let's save and say hello wednesday july 20th you can also get the author of the content or of the message so message the author uh though this would give you a user instance so if you want to get the username or the tag let's do tag it will tell you who sent the message so let's just do hello world and if we look in the logs it will say the author okay that's the username and the discriminant right there okay so that's just the message create content or i'm sorry the message create event at a basic level so one exercise that i would encourage you to try yourself is since we've already opted into the guild guild messages and message content intent uh, we can actually look right over here at the docs and you can see that for the guild intent any of these events should be uh, received okay so for example if i want to create a channel because i've already opted into the guild intent i should be able to receive that uh, that event whenever i create a channel and we don't need to enable anything in regards to this on the application okay so i would encourage you to try to handle the channel create event yourself by listening to it and uh use the documentation to your advantage right so for example channel create event uh the callback function is going to take in one parameter called channel okay if you look at an event that has two parameters that means that uh, that callback function will have the will have two arguments okay the first one will be channel the second one will be time they're in respective order from top to bottom okay so for example if i were to listen to channel pins update the callback function the first parameter would be channel the second parameter will be time so for example if i were to client the on channel pins update the first argument will be channel the second argument will be dates like that okay so hopefully that makes sense that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully you all learned something new. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.